What's up internet friends? This is Nicole Glass and in today's video I'm going to be addressing the question, do travel photos sell on stock photography platforms? If you're like me, you like to travel and you also like to take travel photos. And you're hoping to make a little bit of money from your trip because let's be real, flight tickets are expensive, traveling is expensive, staying in hotels is expensive. It all really adds up. And it feels really good when you can make a little bit of that money back after your trip from all of the beautiful photography and videography you did during that time. But I'm going to be honest, if you are like most travelers, it's gonna be really, really hard to sell your travel photos on Shutterstock or other stock photography platforms. I'm just talking about Shutterstock because as you guys know, that's what I use the most. And here is why it's gonna be difficult. When many people travel, they like to all go to the same locations. They go to the same castles, they visit the same beaches, they go to the same monuments, they swim in the same lakes, and they take photos of the exact same spots. You guys know what I mean. As a result, all of their photos look pretty similar. So then when they go and upload those photos to Shutterstock, they're gonna be competing with potentially hundreds of thousands of other highly beautiful photos taken at those exact same spots. And the chances that their photos are going to rank on the first or second page of the search results, when there's hundreds of thousands of other photos of that exact same spot already, the chances of that happening is very, very slim. But that's if you're like most travelers. Now, if on the other hand, you like to go off the beaten path and see things and go places where most people don't go, you have a much better chance of selling your photos on a stock photography platform because your photos will be a lot more unique. If you're avoiding the tourist traps and you're going to the places that are not well documented on Shutterstock, but for which there might be a need for those photos, then you're making yourself more valuable and unique. Also, rather than just taking photos of the beauty that you see on your travels, it might be worth taking other kinds of photos, taking photos of the details that most people choose to ignore. That could be an overcrowded airplane, a parade that's taking place in whatever city you're visiting, people doing weird things on the street, antique items in a museum, the entrance sign of a specific famous hotel or restaurant that is not yet on Shutterstock. Basically just taking photos of those other things that people don't pull their cameras out for. And when you do take photos of those popular tourists spots which you're definitely going to be doing because you're also traveling for fun and those are places you want to see try to get different perspectives or different angles of those places so that your photos stand out a little bit it will probably still be hard to sell those photos but you'll have a greater chance of selling them if you have a unique element to them so what do I mean? Let's say you're at Neuschwanstein Castle, the Great Wall of China, the Taj Mahal, the Statue of Liberty, any of those places. Rather than just taking a pretty photo of those places from, you know, the angle that everybody takes those photos from, you could maybe take a photo of a group of tourists who are taking a selfie in front of that location. So now you have the location in the background and you've got a bunch of tourists taking a selfie in the foreground and it makes the photo a little bit more useful to like maybe a travel blog or travel magazine that's looking for photos documenting the tourist's experience. You get what I mean. So a lot of people actually leave comments underneath my videos with links to their Shutterstock portfolios and they ask me, what am I doing wrong? Now I can't do like in-depth reviews for everyone. Like I just, I don't have the time for that, but sometimes I do click on them and look a little bit and I usually see pretty much like the same thing with every portfolio. Now let's assume that they have all 50 keywords, their captions are perfect, like they haven't done any of the technical things wrong and their photos are edited perfectly and they're still not getting any downloads, why could that be? Well, then you wanna look at the content of what they're uploading. If they have 10 photos up, I mean like, you can't even like you can't even complain but let's say they have a thousand photos up and they're not getting any downloads so then you're looking at those 1000 photos and a lot of times i'll see photos of popular tourist locations cats dogs birds trees fields flowers all those kinds of photos that are so common on shutterstock already and i am not surprised <laughs> because you cannot compete in those categories. You just can't. No matter how beautiful your photos are 
or how cute your cat is or whatever. You can't compete when you're uploading photos of a highly saturated topic. So your goal should be to try to document things that other people are not documenting, finding unique angles and perspectives. Those might not necessarily be the most beautiful photos, but they might be the photos that are undocumented thus far. I hope that makes a little bit of sense, and I hope that gives you some ideas for how you can take travel photos that might be more likely to sell on a platform like Shutterstock. You know, obviously I travel, I take lots of photos, and of course I take those iconic, beautiful images of the popular places, but those are not usually the ones that sell. Those are the ones that are just for me. The ones that sell are the ones with like a different perspective. Like this photo right here of a parade happening in a small town in Germany where people are wearing traditional German costumes. That one sells quite often actually, whereas my beautiful photo of the Neuschwanstein castle does not. So that's it for today, and if you watched this video till the very end, I actually have a question for you that is actually really important for me. I would like to know what kind of content do you want me to make in the future, and preferably give me some ideas that don't have anything to do with Shutterstock. I know a lot of people come, come to my channel because of my Shutterstock videos, but there is so much more to photography, and Shutterstock really is only a small part of my life, so I'd like to make other types of content for you that might be interesting. So let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. And also, are vlogs something that interests you, or you don't care about my, you know, daily life? You can be honest, let me know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.